Hey guys, why so aggressive here? And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my thumbnails. Now, this is a disclaimer. I am not trying to copy anybody or anything like that. I'm just simply trying to show you my method that I use to make my thumbnails. And yes, I said my method. I've never seen anybody use this method because I made I I looked up two different methods on YouTube on how to make thumbnails and I mixed them together into one method. So that's why I call it my method. I never seen anybody use this method. And also, this is not an in-depth tutorial because I'm not good at explaining like the little details. So if you want to learn like those little details, you can go ahead and go in the description below to get a, a base foundation on how to use GIMP is what we're gonna be using. And um, just yeah, there's a basic tutorial and an advanced tutorial. Go ahead and check those two out. And then when you're done with those two videos, go ahead and come back to this video and I'll show you this amazing method. So first off, you want to download GIMP and then you want to install GIMP. After you've done that, you want to come to this website called DaFont and you want to download a um, a font and whatever font you want. But if you don't know of a font, like you, you can't find one or that you like or anything like that, um, you could just use this font that we're going to be using in this video. It's called Jack's Candlestick, and then um, you just search it there in the search bar and then you want to click download and then after you download it go to where you downloaded it and then right click it click extract all and extract it to the desktop just to make it easier for yourself and then um, well, when you extract it anyways this opens up and uh, the one that you want to download because these are basically different versions of the original Jack's Candlestick and uh, the original Jack's Candlestick is the top one so double click the top one click install and then it should install for you you don't need to worry about any of these other ones on the bottom just just the top one so once it's installed you can go ahead and delete it and uh, you can get straight into this next step so go back to your browser and go to Google and find some images for your thumbnail um, I'm gonna be making a crossy road thumbnail for this video so I am gonna type in crossy road and then I'm gonna go to images and look for a background um, let's see here. Oh, I like this background right here. This can be my background. So I clicked on it, click view image, right click, save image as, and then save it. Well, I actually have an image just like this, but I edit it a little bit. So it'll be my background, not this one. But, uh, yeah. And also a tip is if you want, uh, like, little things in your, your, uh, picture, like in your, uh, thumbnail, like say you wanted this thing I'm not sure what that is say if you wanted oh I think it's a koala but if you wanted one of those in your thumbnail um, what you do is say I want a cow I'll type in crossy road cow and then whatever picture it is you want to put PNG after it this basically means that most of these pictures that you're gonna look for are gonna be transparent and how you could tell it's transparent is when you click on it, you can see this check report in the background. That means there's going to be no background. It's just going to be the cow or whatever you're searching for. So enough with the images. Once you've gotten all your images, you want to go ahead and open up GIMP. Okay, so once GIMP opens up, you want to go ahead and adjust everything to your likings. I know this resets every time. I open up GIMP so I gotta do this I gotta adjust it but once you have adjusted it go ahead and click on file open and then you want to look for that photo or that in background <coughs> <coughs> and then uh, once you have opened up that background image you want to go ahead and determine on whether or not it needs a Gaussian blur which is basically when it blurs the whole image um, you can determine this by looking at the image to see um, is it too bright or is it too flashy and in this case this image is too flashy as you can see like a lot of viewers would focus on this image rather than the text and that's not what you want so to avoid this what you do is you click on filters blur Gaussian blur and you want to do a Gaussian blur where you highlight this and you type in 17 
and then um, you click OK and it'll do a Gaussian blur of 17 and as you can see this is a Gaussian blur it's blurry and then uh, you've done that step correctly if it's like this so now you want to add a text so click on the text tool and go ahead and click this top corner drag it doesn't need to be perfect because you're gonna adjust it and you just want to line it up with the edges of the image you want to line up the text like lines with the edges of the image so once you've done that you click inside this box and you want to type in whatever you want I'm gonna type in getting to 200 on crossy road there we go so highlight it once you found out what you wanted to type and then um, you see this right here in the tool options menu you want to go to justify right here and then click this third one and it'll center out the text then you want to change the size of your text I put 200 you can check check that out mess with that see what you want and after you found out your size of the text you want to click on this little icon and you want to find out your font you want to find where your font is now this is always a pain since there's always like there's a lot of fonts so just go ahead and look for it mine is remember uh, Jack's candlestick so wait Ooh. Oh, I just saw it. There you go. Jack's candlestick. And then uh, it'll change to that font. And then you want to adjust it to how you want. So I'm going to make it so the text is in the center. And there we go. I, I guess that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's the center. I think it's centered pretty good. There's no other way to like perfectly center it. You just got to eyeball it. So once you have centered it or you think you center it, click on this right here in the tool option menu and the color and then you want to choose one of these white boxes but if you don't have any of them also you may not have these don't worry about it I just those are presets that I made but you click on the white box but if you don't have a white box just simply drag this to the bottom like that, the bottom corner and it'll be white and you just click OK and it'll change your text to white now um, now you just click on this square or anything in this menu and it'll deselect like you just saw and um i don't know why i said square just just click anything and it'll it'll deselect the text but once it does that you could see it looks pretty good but you need to outline it so it stands out so to do this you want to right click in this layers gradient menu this space you want to right click click um new layer and then you don't want to mess with anything up here just go ahead and click on transparency and then click OK and then you'll get a new layer you want to drag this layer right beneath like right beneath the text layer you can't have it like too beneath. you can't have it like that you have to have it right beneath so um, once you have done that right click the text layer and click text to path and I can't I can't stress this enough click on the layer just normal click like click on it and make sure you click on this layer and because if you don't do this it's not gonna work but click on it and then go wait what the heck happened okay so click wait nope nope don't do that click why does that keep popping up with the heck okay click one time click select click from path and it'll make this it'll outline it then you want to click select again grow and then you want to change the number to six and click OK and then you'll see the outline has gotten even bigger now you want to click this bucket fill tool this little paint bucket and you want to click on one of the letters and it'll outline it just like this and then to uh, make it so it's not like that anymore like the little outline the little pixel things you just hold down shift then hold down control with it and then hold down A with it then it will deselect it and you can see this looks pretty good now if you like this thumbnail and this is you don't want any you don't want to do this next step uh, you don't have to but then you'll be done and uh, but I'm gonna show you this next step this is to add color to the white and the, the, the white color to add color instead of it just being plain white and um, to do this what you want to do is you want to right click this top text layer 
you want to click on alpha to selection and then after you've done that it'll do that thing again you just want to click on this tool called the blend tool and then um, with this tool um, when you have it when you clicked it open up the tool options menu again okay. uh, <clears throat> excuse me I burped and then um, you want to click in the square right here and then you want to scroll down to whatever color you want but the color I'm gonna use is this rainbow color right here and um, um, then you basically just click and drag any way you want and um, it'll basically make this color so say I drag from here to there it does this or if I drag from here to there it does this just like you just mess with it see what colors you want also you could change the shape to get a different effect and uh, bilinear and linear are kind of the same so doesn't really affect it in this case but I think this is pretty good I think this is pretty good color so what we're gonna do now is hold shift then control then A and it'll deselect it and boom you've got your color your outline your uh, background your Gaussian blur and everything and it looks great but we have to do the vignette effect and the vignette effect is basically where you have the darkened edges of edges of the image the background edge image and you don't need to do this I only do this for some thumbnails so this is optional as well as the Gaussian blur in the beginning so what you do if you want to do this drag everything down not too down where you can't grab it anymore but just uh, drag it down like that make sure you have space uh, this is this is how you make sure you have space because just by dragging it down because you're gonna need some space so I uh, actually pull back the, pull this um, toolbox back up real quick and uh, what you want to do is you want to click on this ellipse select tool and then pull this down okay so now you have the ellipse select tool and basically you just click anywhere and drag it across to the other end and then you adjust so you see these boxes here these in the corners you want to adjust it so it's so the edge right here is perfectly aligned with with the corner of each um, end of the image so you just keep aligning it so that's good align this make sure it's lined good make sure everything's perfect well, it doesn't have to be super perfect but just align it and then once it's aligned you want to go ahead and click on this toggle quick mask and it'll make it red as you can see um, I think one time it made it gray for me but I don't think that really matters but um, if it's like this um, what you want to do is you want to pull back up your menus Wait. Pull this one up, okay, and then pull this one. So then you can pull back up your menus, and then uh, so once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to normal click this the the picture, like the background picture, not the text or layer. Just normal click, then right click, and then click on um, add layer mask, and then uh, you want to click on channel and then make sure it's set to quick mask then you click add then it'll make a it'll still be red but it'll be a checkerboard look so you've done this right don't worry about it but now um, what you want to do is you want to go to filters blur Gaussian blur and you want to do a Gaussian blur of 625 and then click OK now it'll blur the sides as well as the black, the black, uh, red checkerboard, and uh, the center won't be really blurred too much. And um, this this means you did it right. Don't worry, you still did it right. Then you want to right click in this side menu again. You want to click new layer, and then you want to click foreground color. Don't mess with any settings. Once again, click OK, and it'll make this whole thing black. Now, what you want to do is you want to drag this layer under the the uh, image and then you'll have the vignette effect completed all you gotta do is just move this on the side so you can see this click it and deselect it like I said shift control A and boom there you go this is the thumbnail is completed you can 
Now go ahead and export it like this. Go to File, Export As. Um, I'm going to export it to the desktop. Let me change it to something else, the name, because it's going to say that I need a replacer or whatever. I'll just put Pac Man 255. Export. And sometimes these settings will be different, but don't worry about it. Just always click export. Don't mess with any settings. And then, now you have got your finished thumbnail. As you can see here, it is finished and it looks amazing. You got your Gaussian blur in the background, you got your vignette effect, and then you got your text. As you can see, it looks amazing. You have finally made yourself an amazing thumbnail and, um, I really like this method because the method I used to use, basically the outline wasn't like this. Like this outline looks amazing. So, uh, and that's about it for this video. Make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.